are difficult times. Standing against crime, prostitution, drug addiction on our streets has always been hard. But with the social upheaval, the economic changes, the disease, it's gotten pretty overwhelming some days. We all want to help. And maybe that's part of the problem. We're not sure how to help. How can each one of us be part of the solution? How can we, in our own way, in our own small part of the world, truly help? The answer is surprisingly simple and yet very costly. So my name is Roger and I was a farmer in West Central Minnesota and really got to a place in my life where I was questioning, you know, what is my purpose? What is, what am I here for? And in 2012, I ended up on a mission trip in Haiti and went back in 2013 and just really started to question with my wife, Karen, like, you know, what exactly are we, is our purpose? What are we doing here? And started to explore mission websites and got drawn to a, a website that said family and youth mentoring central Ohio. And so, in 2014, we moved here with our four youngest children and just started to engage in a neighborhood and fall in love with the neighborhood, but we didn't really know exactly what that meant yet at that point in time. And then in 2016, Karen was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer and 46 days later, she died. And um, wasn't really sure at that point again, because I think my world shifted again enough that I just, once again, I was kind of like, what is my purpose here? I'm Alex, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I took a job in Lancaster, Ohio after I graduated college. Um, and I was a children's director for a church. Um, I knew I was always going to work with kids. I just didn't know what that looked like. Then after taking this job, it was about six months. I just kind of realized this wasn't for me. I didn't feel fulfilled from it. I didn't feel like I was impacting kids. I wasn't sure the kids were getting anything out of it anyways. So after that, I just decided I needed to find something else. So I started looking, but I just didn't know what to do after that. I'm Emmeline. Uh, I worked in the corporate world for 10 years and had a really satisfying career. Pretty much set goals, was able to meet them. Uh, served on, did a lot of voluntary work in the community, um, mentored kids, uh, tutored and mentored kids, served on some church boards, played year-round soccer, had a really fulfilling life. Um, so I thought, but I wasn't really sure. There was something missing. I love my job, well, most of my job. I love the travel, but there was still kind of a sense like I should be doing something, but I wasn't sure what it was. It was kind of a restlessness. Today is the beginning of the metacognition group and Pastor Jan does like the next four or five weeks after today. So this is just kind of set the table with, you know, how our minds and the intelligence that we use to get us started in that process. Okay. And you all have those papers. So when Karen passed away, um, I was working for a nonprofit called Lower Lights Ministries and they were considering starting a recovery program and trying to figure out how my trauma fit with um, the women that we were looking to serve and what that looked like. And so um, I became the director of, of the new recovery program and discovered that um, the connection that I really had with them um, was how my trauma fit in with their trauma and how that connection was built off of that. And while I had to wait till later in life to experience that type of trauma, they had experienced that much earlier in life. And I, I didn't see that coming, that how that would fit us together and how we would be able to build relationship off of that, which really is the connecting point of our recovery program and what that looks like. So I found out about this opportunity at Lower Lights. When I got here, I decided 
I don't actually want to do this. I did not feel qualified to be here. I didn't feel qualified for really anything that they try to do, that Lower Lights tries to accomplish. So I decided not to, told them, never mind, and uh, I left. And then they called me later and uh, said yes anyways, which I still did not understand or feel qualified for at all, um, but decided I needed, I needed a change, I needed to take a risk, so I decided to move. Um, and then when I got here, I thought I was pretty good at relationships, um, but it turns out I maybe wasn't. And when I first met one of the kids here, Josh, he did not like me. And he made it very clear that he did not like me. A friend of mine told me about a volunteering uh, position at Lower Lights. I was familiar with the name Lower Lights, but I had really no clue as to what Lower Lights did. And she said, with your background in human resources, they need job coaches. Uh, at a program called Rachel's House, which is a program, housing program for women coming out of prison. And she said, since you've worked in HR so long, you'd be pretty good at helping them write resumes, mock interviewing, helping them find jobs. And so I thought, oh yeah, I could do that. Um, time commitment didn't seem too bad. So I made an appointment, came down and talked with the volunteer coordinator and met with the director of the program. And they got me set up with meeting my first uh, woman so we met at the house and sat at the kitchen table and as I was getting into it I realized my background and the way that I was raised and taught to find a job my skills and opportunity and education uh, were quite different than the woman sitting across from me and so the more I'd meet with her and start talking with her I realized that this wasn't really about the job skills and the mock interviewing this is more about relationship and getting to know her and finding out about her backstory. And eventually we got to the, the job search and the resume writing, uh, but spent more time just getting to know each other. Most recent example was uh, during the shutdown, um, a lot of volunteer groups haven't been able to come and do landscaping. So I, one morning I got up early and went over to the apartments and had some hedge trimmers and uh, lawn bags and thought, well, I can do some of the weeding and hedge trimming. And as I was out there, Elise came out and started helping. and. We ended up doing all the landscaping for the apartments. And as we were out there sweating it out in the sun, it occurred to me, like, we're just doing life together. Nine months ago, we were living in our car, practically. Yeah, 10 months ago. Yeah, 10 months ago. We were living in our car, and we were working at a restaurant, but barely, um, just to pretty much support our habits. And we were just unhappy. <laughs> We, we just couldn't stop using. And we joked about killing ourselves and giving him up for adoption. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was no quality of life. Um, you know, it was just, you know, constantly chasing, you know, the high, how to get high, you know, how to get money mm -hmm. to get high. Um, our, the way I think about it is our souls were just gone. We didn't have any. Our, we didn't have any depth to us. Um, I don't, we were barely speaking to each other, unless it was related to something we yeah. shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we're just. Um, you know, we were we were enslaved to this this lifestyle and and you know this this powerful drug that just kept us trapped. I mean, we just we couldn't break free. So. I'm oh, Michael. I'm Danielle and um, we're in the Lower Lights Family Housing Program. We have two children, Malachi, who's 14, Joshua, who's 11. Um, and so we've been in this family housing program for about a year and a half now. With Joshua, he's had behavior issues in the past. Um, he, he had difficulties with making friendships with children. He wanted to become friends with kids and communicate, but he had trouble with that. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with that because I wanted to be his friend. I wanted to be in a relationship with him. I wanted to just play. And he 
didn't want that. So I wasn't really sure what to do with that because I thought I was pretty good at friendship. Um, but he just, he wanted nothing to do with me. So many of our women when they come have been in recovery enough times that they can teach the substance use part of this. It's discovering where your value and your worth comes from and that really only comes through trust and building relationship and it starts here at the ground level. I never would have guessed that Karen passing away would have been really how I connected and made relationship with the ladies that are in our program and I'm really thankful and grateful for that, for that connective tissue and that relationship and I really like what I do. Literally you see tears in their eyes right along with mine because yeah. they genuinely care. You know, they're they're there for a reason. They like like you guys said, a lot of them volunteer to even do services with us. You know what I mean? Like I'm dealing with trauma from, I'm 43 years old and I'm dealing with trauma that came from when I was five and six years old that I didn't even know was a problem. I didn't know it made me turn out to be the addict that I am. I didn't know that my anger issues stemmed from that. I didn't know that I didn't know how to be a good mother because unfortunately my mom wasn't taught how to be either. We did the best with what we knew. There's no place you can go that treats addiction. Without that a time limit. Is it okay, you have six months and you're out. We don't care what you do after that. You're out a year and six months. That's all your insurance pays for, bye. They don't even care if they put, they send you to the streets. They, they, they don't tell care. You, you'll leave when you're better. Yeah, you leave when you're ready to leave. So through Emmeline, through Roger, through Pastor Jan, they just embrace me with so much love. They, they, the way they treat people inside the community and outside of the community, um, the way they wanted me to treat myself was really just to me how, how Christ should be. They should make you feel like you're comfortable in your own skin. They should make you feel like it's okay to revisit certain traumas that you've gone through. Um, so you can grow from that and, and you can know that, that God loves you. After Josh didn't want to be my friend, um, I decided I, that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to be his friend. So uh, I kind of found something that he enjoyed, which was football. And I just asked him one day if he wanted to play catch. And uh, he seemed surprised that I wanted to play, but we did it. And we ended up playing catch in the field for almost an hour and just talking. And he finally decided to spill his guts and was just kind of telling me about school, telling me why he loved football so much, what team he played for, asked me if I wanted to go to any of his games or if I would. And then we just became friends after that. And it's not just, hey, I work here. Hey, here's this kid, do what I ask. It's, he has to trust me, I have to be able to trust him. It's a relationship that things start happening, doors start opening and you become friends and now, Josh comes over, we hang out, he wants to tell me everything that happens in the day and he's a fun kid to be around and like his personality came out once he realized, hey, we're actually friends and I'm not just here to make you do what I want you to do. We really appreciate all that you've done with Joshua. You know, it was, he was a little bit of a diamond in the rough when we first got here. Yeah. He's had a lot of issues. Yeah. And we really appreciate, you know, the Laura Lights Kids program because he's come a long way. He just seems happy when he comes to see us and like, we're actually friends. Like, I like it. And he's, I love hanging out with him. I love being with him. Like, it's so much fun. I love that kid yeah, so I much. Love I love him. <laughs> So today we are on our way to go pick up a new recovery participant. She is coming out of a, another treatment facility. So she has some 28 days clean. We are 
going to pick her up and get her introduced to community today and to get some paperwork done and just to help her feel safe and start to establish some goals and what this looks like for her today. So when the new girl gets here tomorrow, we're going to make tacos and homemade guacamole and we're gonna make her a cake. It's gonna be a pineapple upside down cake. So hopefully that will make her feel a little bit more welcome. And we're gonna sit down and talk to her and kind of explain to her where everybody's at in the program and who's in what phase and you know let her know that she can come to us for whatever she needs and if she has questions or just anything we're just gonna let her know like she's welcome and we're here for her so we're gonna show her she can have what we have well i find so <laughs> encouraging and just powerfully um it just inspiring to me and to staff. I know probably other staff feel this way is when you see people come into the program just kind of broken and battered by life and just as time goes by you watch this uh, person that you know is in there and is it sure that they're in there and just yeah. slowly come to life and that is the most encouraging probably fills me with joy one of the most joyous things of serving in this ministry but then the next step which gives me even greater joy to watch is when uh, people are actually able to start giving back so i think it's so cool that you're going to be a parent parenting mentor for our family recovery housing because you know like i can't i can relate to some people's stories but i can't relate to a lot of stories and so since you've been or since you are a mom and you are in recovery but you also know what it's like to be pregnant and not sure which way to go and not sure what hope looks like. So you can relate a lot more. And the fact that you're gonna be a mentor to uh, incoming new moms, I just think is so powerful and exciting to watch. I'm so excited about you being involved with the new program because one of the things, each one of these units, we have four of them, um, will be putting in a mom and her newborn infant. Yeah, which That's is amazing. so much like what happened with you. Yeah. But what we want to do is have a, mo uh, a time set aside um, where the mom is able to, like, you can hold the baby while she goes up and takes a shower yeah. so that she has support and encouragement. And I know that it's me mentoring these women, but honestly, I, I really think it's going to help me just as much. So I'm looking forward to it. They, they show us that we can rely on God and we can find our worth in God. We don't have to find our worth in men. It, it, we can find our worth in God here. And that makes a big difference. They should have more places like this everywhere. I agree, yeah. definitely. Hey, Chris. Yeah. What are we working on? Checking out the store. I've only known Chris for a short time but uh, I can tell the guy has got good character. He's got a good work ethic and uh, he knows the trades. And for us in property, that's, that's huge to get somebody that knows the trades. He's gonna be an asset. And I mean that. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> so close, so close. That took you 17 seconds. Come on, children. Now, being here, I, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I love being with these kids, even on my off time. I'm still playing with them. They're still here. Just had dinner with a couple of them the other day. So now, I actually feel like I'm impacting kids and families and um, everything that that entails with them. I don't really know how to explain that feeling, but it's just this kind of peaceful feeling, a calming of wow, this is really great. Like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Like, I don't know what I would do on a Tuesday if it wasn't playing with them or wasn't sitting down doing homework with them. It just seems normal and natural now, but it's also this like wholesome feeling of, ah, yes, like this is it. This is what I've been asked to do. This is what I feel that I can do now and I enjoy doing it. So it just kind of makes everything a lot easier.
You see, we can all help by grasping the incredible power and beauty of authentic relationships, making space in our lives where another feels safe and understood. Yes, it's gonna cost you something to listen to someone and to share yourself with someone unlike you, but the effect is so powerful that it transforms lives, yours and theirs. It's a way that we can all help truly make a difference. Because the relationship effect, no matter how small your efforts, multiplies and frees others to become leaders passionate about helping, and the world is changed.